guys, it's Angela May, Assistant Curator of Education at the Birmingham Museum of Art, and we're going to be exploring hanging scrolls and discover some certain key points to look for when you're looking at an East Asian hanging scroll, uh, specifically a landscape. Landscape paintings for over a thousand years have been the highest form of painting and art in East Asia. It's not just a popular subject, but it's a really great way to reveal the majesty of nature, but also a way for humans to view their relationship to nature. Um, many, many, many years ago, scholars who were stuck inside for long periods of time would look at a landscape painting and imagine themselves outside. They would be looking for a mountain, hiking through the forest, um, on a boat, on a beautiful pond. These paintings served essentially as a mental escape and a tool to think about the place humans have in the world. And the reason we're specifically looking at hanging scrolls is because hanging scrolls could be hung so that you could view the painting in its entirety, but that you could also focus on small sections at a time. Usually you would need to get very close to a painting to see such small sections and the intense detail that are in these paintings, but the BMA has a tool to help you zoom in and see the extreme details. And so first I'm gonna show you quickly how to hover in the corner and then you see this plus sign. So we're gonna zoom in and this is how we'll be able to explore the painting and look at the details. But first I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out because the first step to looking at a hanging scroll is to view the painting in its entirety, to look at it all at once, take it in. I often recommend listening to music when you're looking at a hanging scroll, and art in general, I recommend listening to music. But if you can at least look at a single painting for the duration of one song, you'll start to realize that you're gonna notice things that you wouldn't normally had you just looked at the painting and then walked away. When I look at East Asian landscapes, I typically listen to Ramble On by Led Zeppelin. It kind of puts me at ease and, and helps me get in the zone and focus, but you can listen to any song that you want. So as you're looking at the painting in its entirety, you're gonna notice that there's typically three sections in an East Asian hanging scroll landscape painting. You're gonna have the top, middle, and bottom. So there are very specific items that you typically will find in a landscape painting and they mean something. And the first thing to look for is a mountain or mountains. So let's take a look. They're normally at the top because mountains are, are quite high. Let's go ahead and zoom in just to get a closer view. We'll do a better zoom in in a little bit but you can see this monumental peak that it's so tall that it's actually rising beyond the edge of the painting. So we know that the mountain extends more than the view that the artist has even given us, which is a way to say that this is just a small vignette because the world is so large and no matter where we are in the world, when we're looking at it, we can only see a certain amount and that the world just keeps extending beyond our viewpoint. The mountain in East Asian painting typically symbolizes a sacred area where people should not go. Mountains are the homes of the gods, especially in Taoism, uh, mountaintops are the homes of the immortals. And also when you think about mountains, it takes thousands of years to form. Therefore, we know that mountains stand the test of time. So when you look at a mountain in an East Asian painting, you're not just looking at this kind of glorious, large natural landscape, but you're also meant to know that it existed before you and it will continue to exist after you. So the next thing to look at is for mist. 
If you have a large mountain, there's normally going to be mist kind of swirling around. Um, and mist can symbolize just this divide between, again, the area where, where humans and people live and then this kind of sacred landscape, this area where you really shouldn't go. So if we zoom in, and it's hard to tell on this scroll, we've got some mist here. We have some mist floating around up top. The next thing to search for is water. Uh, there's usually a river or a waterfall, a lake or a pond. Water shows movement, but it's also harmony with nature. If we think about the relationship between mountains and rivers, rivers begin in the snowy mountain peak. It's flowing down. So rivers really connect mountains, the sacred places, home of the gods, to people. And the river nourishes the land. And so here, let's see, we definitely have water present and it kind of starts over here and we see it, the banks, bridge, people floating in the water. Um, so the next thing that to look for is either a tiny house or a temple, some sort of man-made structure. So when you start looking around, you're going to be looking for maybe a Taoist temple nestled in the forest. And here we have a structure here. We have multiple structures going on. And, and these are just, again, to, to mark a place so that you know where man's places, people's places within the landscape versus the area where people shouldn't be going again to to acknowledge this sacred place and that there's a place for humans and that there's a place for the divine and also you'll notice that there are no straight lines in nature so the elements you see the mountains the hills the trees the leaves they all kind of have these curvy, sinuous lines. And so the buildings, the man-made structures are going to have very straight lines. And that's a reminder to show people's interference in natural scenery. And so then, speaking of that, the next thing to look for are people. Many times in landscape paintings, you'll see tiny figures. These are people walking, fishing. Um, sitting around and, and, and just thinking or maybe writing poetry. If we remember, these paintings were meant for people to kind of view themselves in the landscape. So here we have someone right here. Let's zoom in. It looks like he's fishing. Let's see if we see anybody else. Here we have someone wandering down a path right here. And again, it's just a reminder that there's the area where humans live, but that you can still get lost within nature, but there's also a place that should be revered. So the next step, now that we've identified these very specific elements of a landscape painting, is to imagine that you were alive, say, 500 years ago, and your job now is to imagine yourself in this landscape, to visualize yourself walking on the pathway leading up the mountain. Maybe your legs are getting tired. You hear the sinking of the birds, the winds at your back. And so this is where the zoom tool really helps because you can zoom in on these tiny details that you wouldn't be able to get so close in the museum and notice the way that the artist uses just tiny little brush strokes for the leaves, dots to show moss and grass, and just kind of move up through the painting and explore.